All right, so for this last tutorial, we are going to focus specifically on groups. Um, now, what we've covered already so far is importing uh, Twitter networks or from other uh, network file types. Um, we've also covered uh, counting and merging some of these edges here. Uh, we've covered some of the uh, how to calculate metrics for the network and use those metrics to uh, help visualize the network. And now what we're going to do last is uh, uh, group this network even further to kind of detect a little sub-communities that are taking place within this community or within this uh, particular network. And we can already see when uh, we changed our visualization from this default layout to the... Give it a second, my computer's running a little slow. There we go. All right, so... <laughs> We've got this default label or layout, which basically uh, arranges the network from uh, the most highly connected to the least highly connected. Um, and when we switch over to this multi-scale layout, uh, which is actually my preferred uh, layout, then we start to kind of get a feel for some of the uh, little cliques or sub-communities that have formed within this particular network. Uh, there we go. So we can kind of see over here, uh, we have a small little grouping over here. This person is only connected to this group of people and then this little group. Then we have this one group right here that we looked at a little bit earlier. And uh, I was just kind of wagering that they were part of a more formal uh, NC Ed Chat. Um, so now let's go in and look at the ways we can actually group individuals. So we're going to use this group. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple ways. We're going to group by cluster and by motif. Um, and then at the end, I'll talk about uh, grouping by vertex, vertex attribute. So then we could group individuals by their professional role. For example, we could put all teachers into a single group. Um, but we're going to focus on these uh, groupings or these clusters uh, or these little sub-communities that are kind of evolving or emerging uh, organically as opposed to groups uh, that we impose uh, upon the network. Uh, so let's first do a group by mood. Uh, by motif. And this is going to group uh, the network uh, by the uh, basic configurations within the network. So we can see we have this kind of little fan motif here where everybody's just connected to this one individual. Uh, so let's go ahead and group by motif. Uh, we'll just use the default layout. Uh, that's pretty effective. So it's going to group by these star patterns. So here's a little star pattern where all these people uh, are just connected to this one individual. Uh, we can see we have lots of little star patterns in here. Uh, it's also going to go ahead and it's going to find the people who are connected uh, uh, by these uh, sort of mediators here. And then it's going to find their actual clicks. So these are these uh, little tightly connected groups. Uh, and I imagine we're going to find a number of clicks over in this group right here. So let's click OK. And let's refresh our graph. And this is going to clean it up quite a bit. And there we go. Okay, so now you can see like a number of motifs happening out here. We've got a lot of these little uh, star patterns. They've been collapsed into just a single group here. Um, so these are like three to five. Actually, it's eight individuals all connected to this one person. Lots of fan motifs going on throughout here. These are all people within these fans that are only connected to a single individual. Um, we have a little small click right here, and then a much larger click right here as well. Um, and then if you noticed over here, there's a groups tab. So we have our edges. Uh, these are the relationships. We have the vertices. These are all the people, the nodes that are actually in the network. And then now we have our groups. So these are all the groups that are formed, and these are just kind of grouping patterns that are taking place within the MOOC, um, or within this uh, particular Twitter chat. Um, so let's go back and let's redo this. Uh, we're going to group by these kind of natural uh, clusters that emerge. So we're going to group by cluster instead. Uh, we'll use this basic one. Uh, I've used this one, the uh, Wakita Tsurumi. I've used this one for bigger networks. Uh, so this is more appropriate when you have really, really large networks. Uh, but this uh, default one works really well. And all of these uh, individuals in the network that uh, just aren't connected to each other, we're going to put them in their own separate little group. So let's click OK. And it's going to regroup everybody. 
So this grouping tab is going to change a little bit. There we go. So you can see we kind of have uh, quite a number of new groups here that have formed. And let's refresh this a little. There we go. Give it one second. Okay, and you can see what happens is uh, this default layout when you regroup people, um, it's going to change the uh, uh, the colors for the groupings and the actual shape of the group. If we want to switch back to images, we can go ahead and switch back to images. So let's see, there's a group right here. There we go. That's a pretty sizable group right there. Group one. All right. I actually have a preference here for the images, so let's go back to graph options. Oops. All right. Oh, we have image. It's set to image, so let's go to our group options. And right now, it's uh, kind of taking over the colors and the uh, shapes, but we want to change the shapes back to the images. So let's go over here and. We'll change that back. All right, now we have the images again. Uh, but you notice that we did save the colors. So the outline is going to be uh, by group color. So I like that much better. That's great. Um, so that's another way we can group, and let's clean this up just a little bit more now. We're going to learn one last trick, and then we're going to uh, call it a day for the tutorials. Um, so let's go to our layout options. So we saw we have the default, we have the circle. Feel free to play with these. Let's go to layout options, and we're going to put these groups into little boxes with each other. So let's lay out each of the graphs groups into its own box, and we're going to sort them. And for groups that don't have very many edges, we're going to use a grid layout for those. All right. Um, these intergroup edges, we'll keep those. And let's click OK. We're going to refresh this again. All right, there we go. And now we have all of our groups. So separated into groups. Uh, got this big grouping over here. And again, I am wagering that is uh, probably that NC edge chat, the formal, actual formal edge chat. Um, most of the reciprocation we see that is actually happening between these two groups. That's pretty interesting. Uh, one other thing we can do with this uh, layout is go to layout options. Uh, we are going to um, here we go intergroup edges. So these groups, these edges that are taking place between groups, uh, mostly the edges are going to be within a group, but all the ones that are happening between groups, we're going to combine those edges to clean this up a little bit more. And there we go. All right. So we can see there's a lot of interaction or a, a, a much stronger connection between these two groups here. And it looks like this entire group is just kind of centered around a, a couple individuals here, mostly this particular person right here. Um, and it looks like a lot of these people are simply responding to that individual, whereas here it's a much more tightly connected group. And we have a lot of kind of sparse interaction between the other individuals. Um, so now uh, we've walked through all the main features of the Node Excel tutorial, how to import data, how to prep it, um, how to calculate some basic metrics, um, some of the ways that we can visualize it, and also ways that we can group it. Um, so what have we really learned about this NC Ed network? Um, well, we've learned that most of these last 1,000 tweets, or a huge bulk of them, uh, happened at the very beginning of when we pulled this. Uh, we've also learned that most of the individuals in the network are very loosely connected to the other individuals in the network. Uh, we noticed that there is a lot of uh, kind of broadcasting, um, but not a ton of interaction between these groups. And where the interaction is actually taking place, um, it's between like a few small groups here. Um, we've also learned that there's not a lot of back and forth communication between individuals. That's very sparse. That's indicated by these red edges. Um, 
help, but without really a question to guide us through this tutorial, um, we're just kind of making some, uh, just noting some interesting things about this network. Um, so that's going to wrap up our tutorials. If you have any questions about these tutorials, please uh, feel free to post them within uh, uh, the community engagement forum. So I hope these are useful, and I hope you have more questions, and I hope you uh, take uh, some time this week to really kind of play around with these, uh, play around especially with the dynamic filters, um, play around with uh, visualizing the uh, different ways you can uh, show this, um, and just you know take this full week to play around with Node Excel and get a feel for it and uh, all the different ways that you can visualize network data.